Let me go in here and uh, check in. After I check in, then we'll come back and uh, and we'll get into this topic. We'll get into this topic. Uh, personal conveyance. Simplify. Let's talk about it. Well, they gave me my door assignment, door 25. So I got to do a lot of safety precautions. I got to slide my tandems. After I slide my tandems, I got to dolly down. After I dolly down, I got to release the, air, uh, the rear airline. After I do that, I got to chop both wheels. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> I mean, I do got some trucking topics, right? I, I do. I do. I got, I got some trucking topics for you guys. All right. So this one is... FMCSA to drivers. Don't overthink personal convenience time or personal convenience time. And this is very good to me because I use personal convenience when I'm on my 34 or if I want to go get something to eat or if I'm on the yard or, you know, for whatever reason that I may need to go and do something without using my clock to do it i can i can do it i can do it all on my personal time after talking this uh trooper hoover in the uh in that seminar that we had in the group that one day as long as we pretty much explain ourselves see trucking trucking and hos is all about explaining time you know what i'm saying it's all about explaining what you was doing at the time you was doing. Some truck drivers still are grappling with the definition of personal conveyance time. They shouldn't be, according to a top executive for the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration. Now, I would think that some drivers, being that you new drivers, are still struggling with what's the purpose and how to use personal conveyance. Now, I still struggle with it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna lie, and, I'm, and I've been out here for close to four years. You know what I'm saying? But it's still, it's still easy to break down. They, they got it in the uh, FMCSA book, and they got it broken down that way too, but it's better, that, it's, it's better that this guy came out and pretty much explained it. Here's a simple way to evaluate whether the driver is on personal conveyance time. According to Joe DiLorenzo, FMCSA Director of Enforcement and Compliance. Am I off duty? Question. Am I doing any work at the request of the motor carrier rather than myself? Is there major purpose of why the motor vehicle is being moved personal? Is it 
for a non-business related purpose. DiLorenzo gave those words of advice during the electronic logging device update session at the Mid-America Truck Show. Although DiLorenzo was offering a variety of tips about steering clear of troubles using the device, it was personal conveyance time known as authorized personal use time that garnered the most questions from the drivers. Some common examples of personal conveyance time include time spent traveling to logging restaurants, entertainment venues, time spent traveling to a responsible, safe location to obtain required rest or moving the truck at the request of safety officials during the driver's off-duty time. A driver cannot use the time for the sole purpose of advancing the freight or time spent transporting a vehicle to a facility for maintenance. You can't use PC to make it to the uh, make it to the uh, shipper and or receiver. So let's say like you only got five minutes to get there and you don't have the time to get there. You're supposed to shut down and then wait until after your 10 hour. But there's also exceptions to that rule as well. So let's find out. There are no specific time or distance limits for legitimate personal use movement of a commercial vehicle. It doesn't matter where you're hauling or whether you're loaded or unloaded, hooked up to a trailer or not, De Lorenzo said. You can move the vehicle to the nearest safe location on personal conveyance time to get rest. And you don't have to go backwards. I run out of time and I gotta move from the shipper, go get some rest and then come back to the shipper and then start my time. By the way, he's saying it, we don't have to do that. This is one of those times where it's okay to continue on the progress of the load as long as you're stopping at the nearest responsible safe location. We deliberately don't define that because that's a judgment call on the part of the driver. He added that we don't want the driver parking in a parking lot that doesn't have any lighting or any protection. We don't want anybody parking on the side of the highway where it's unsafe. You can make the call. You so happen to run out of time and you're stuck in traffic or you run out of time where there's no adequate parking, then by the way he's saying it, we can continue to find adequate parking. So in other words, we get to a truck stop, there's no parking there. We get to another truck stop, there's no parking there. We can continue going on until we find a truck stop or a rest area to post up on personal conveyance. I'm not kidding. It's, it's right here. It's, it's right here. He says you make the call, by the way. When it comes to the use of ELDs, Dan Lorenzo said drivers foremost need to know whether they're using automatic onboard recording device or ELDs during roadside inspections. One of the most common violation regarding both ELDs and onboard recording devices involves drivers not knowing how to transfer data to the roadside inspector. For you new drivers, you should take the time to go over to Qualcomm. Let's go over that right now. All right, all right. So let's uh, let's take a look at this boy right here. So I was off duty for a total of 63 hours and 30 minutes. Damn it, man. <laughs> That's how long I've been up here in New York, y'all. But anyway, let me show you how to, uh, let me show you how to uh, either email or fax your information over to, uh, over to the DOT inspector. So what you want to do, you want to go here to your eight day right there. This is your eight day. This is your eight day laws right here. Off duty, off duty, off duty, off duty. And then those the rest of your hours that you worked last week it has to have a total of eight on there. All right. So down at the bottom, you got your vehicle information. You got your log request. 
and your email and fax, all right? Right here, the log request and the email and fax is the two that you're gonna want to know about when the DOT inspector requests your, your logs. So you hit your log request. Now you send in for your log request. Right here, you send in your email. So whatever, whatever the phone number and or email they give you, you, you put right here in this information. If they have a fax number, you put it in there attention trooper hoover or whoever the dlt inspector is or you put your email you put the email in there as well and tick 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 then down at the bottom you hit request and then once you hit request it'll cycle through and then it'll send the information off to whoever needs it and that's how you send your your paperwork your your log paperwork into the uh dlt inspector so that's how you do that now if you don't know how to do that learn how to do it because that's the biggest thing that can and will get you in trouble now for the for the few inspections that i had i haven't been asked to send them you know the the dlt inspector would come over they had me switch it over to my law book or my log time, they'll look at that and say, okay, cool. Um, the information that they get is only the last eight days, all right? So only the last eight days. So try to make sure you're not in violation within those eight days. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. All right, DeLorenzo encouraged carriers using onboard, onboard recorders to make the transition to ELDs. Now, rather than waiting to meet the December 16th deadline as the last minute, it's human, it's human nature to procrastinate to the last minute, he said. Please take your time and talk with your providers right now. Make sure you get that change, old schools. While there has been rumors that the use of ELDs was causing more speeding violations to be written, FMCSA records indicate that there has been only a slight bump in speeding violations in the recent months. There are a couple of little tiny spikes, he said, but generally I think it hasn't been as bad maybe as some people think. Now, I've been, you know, I, I've been ELDs ever since. I ran a few paper laws in my day. But ELDs still is not a big deal. I mean, it's all about managing your clock. You know what I'm saying? If you manage your clock right, then the ELD should not be a problem. But you just don't know how things are gonna turn out once you get into traffic. A lot of you guys turn around and be like, yo, why well, you know you should have you should have trip planned better you should have did this better but yeah i, I could have trip planned better but once you get in the traffic and you got you got multiple crashes you got slowdowns you got traffic jams you can't account for all of that stuff you know you just can't and yeah just just know what personal conveyance is all about and i like how you change this right here that right there that right there happens yeah that part right there they don't know what's going on i don't know what's going on so yeah that happened right there as soon as i'm getting ready to go the my my uh co-driver well my co-worker was like hey something's going on he said uh he said hey is your qualcomm working I was like, yeah, it better be. I happened to look over and I seen that and I'm like, okay, what, what what's going on? So we get a we get a fleet wide message saying that something's wrong with the Qualcomm and now we are running that good paper. That good paper. I'm gone, I ain't coming back
nah. You gon' have to settle with another man yeah, yeah. But when you realize, don't be running back 